Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi, Pudai Leiden. Hello Leiden. Uh, welcome to the newest episode of our English Speaking Weekly show. Our show is about giving to voices to foreigners and their stories living in our little town. Who are they? I say let's find out. Today in our studio we have two guests, Dave Lee and Saad Nabil. Uh, welcome to our show. Uh, we are going to start from a very short episode into the lives of our guests that we have prepared for you. Uh, why don't we start from um, Dave? Um, let's see, what where did you take us in the city? Hmm. Uh, I think uh, we were on the Kronburg and uh, yeah, looking forward to see. I haven't seen the video myself as well. Well, this is the center of Leiden. So if you look at this bridge, the Kronburg, it's a um, yeah, it's it's monumental for this uh, for this town, and uh, it's the longest ever existed bridge, and uh, it will overlook the Hemingway Building, which is also a monument in here. So if you talk about historical place, this is the spot to go. And then every Saturdays, every Wednesday, usually there are markets around, so where people gather to buy food. So uh, yeah, it's it's uh, the most frequent visited spot. Behind you, there's the only Chinese supermarket in Leiden. So the Tokyo New World is a uh, is a well, go-to spot if you want to buy special ingredients. And then the Hague is not far away, where there are lots of uh, Oriental uh, restaurants and supermarkets. You can go for some evening treatment if you like. This is a photo of um, of the crew in a theater show I directed in 2016. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, the name of it is a physicist, it's, it's quite well known in the past. And uh, yeah, we are back at that time, we were a group of uh, theater enthusiasts and uh, uh, we have rehearsals for three or four months and uh, we launched the show in December time to, uh, to have our guests and I was one of the best sellers at that time. Uh, we have uh, two nights of uh, on air and all the tickets are sold out. That's amazing. Um, you took us to a very central spot um, mm. in the city, uh, while Saad took us to a bit of unusual spot that not everyone <laughs> <laughs> goes there or explores it. Why don't we uh, see it uh, for ourselves? Sure. Yeah. But why this place? So this place particularly uh, with the fact that for me, when I was very young, uh, I used to go to the Griffith Park Observatory uh, quite often with my parents, and that really instilled uh, a sense of curiosity for astronomy. And uh, yeah, I'm just a total space nerd, so I'm really, uh, really into you know, as astronomy, physics, things of that nature, and so that's why the uh, observatory for Leiden is like right behind you. And um, I actually went inside um, and. Uh, sat on one of the chairs that apparently Albert Einstein used to come and uh, use to observe the stars. And uh, that for me was quite, it was like coming full circle. So it was, uh, it was quite cool. So if you are too much into, so when are you booking your flight to Mars? Oh, as uh, soon as Elon allows me to book a flight, huh? I'm, uh, I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, um, even when I compare like where I work in Amsterdam, for example, there's a lot of young people, but it's not as, let's say, thriving as I would say here in Leida because you see just groups of people all the time doing activities or doing events, so it's, uh, it's quite lively. Um, there is also uh, Plantsoon Park, which I quite enjoy, and it's quite a beautiful scene as well over there, and uh, one, uh, one cafe in particular that I, that I quite enjoy. And that's uh, the Owl Cafe um, in the center of the city. There's a great Thai food place called Siri Thai, um, not too far from here actually. So that's probably one of my number one spots. Yeah. I mean, just like street food wise, right? Like I would, I would definitely go for Kibling because that's 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 easy and uh, it's it's just it's just nice. It's fresh, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to be honest, herring, not particularly a fan. No. Oh, that's uh, that was quite a shock. <laughs> it's quite a shock. I prefer things that are cooked. <laughs> so, uh, so when it when it came to raw fish, that was a bit of a surprise. Thank you very much for sharing your stories with us. Um, and hey, today we have asked something special from our guest to bring an item that 
has a special symbolic value for them. I haven't seen those items yet, so I'm just like you, finding out only now. Saad, why don't you um, sure. show us what did you bring us today? Sure, absolutely. So what I brought is um, a replica of a PlayStation 1. So this is something uh, quite near and dear to my heart. Uh, my father, when I was five years old, he gave me a PlayStation and um, it was just mesmerizing. It was just pure magic. And that's what really got me uh, kickstarted into technology and engineering. And um, yeah, that's why I studied engineering and uh, I'm currently doing that as a profession. That's amazing. Do you still play? Yeah, absolutely. Um, whenever I get time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing sure. that uh, valuable item with us. Yeah, of course. Uh, what about Dave? What did you bring us today? Yeah, I bring my first DSLR, which I got in 2010. And uh, yeah, it was, um, I bought it for my uh, first photography hobby and to start it with. And now it's been 11 years. And it took me to all the trips um, in Asia, in Europe. And I take um, around, a hundred thousand photos with it now so over the time I may change the lens but the body still works and uh, recently I have a um, newer camera bodies but this one is still my favorite to go to it's easy it's lightweight and I'm very familiar with uh, holding it in my hands so yeah uh, this is a special item to get me into doing photography Thank you uh, yeah. for sharing it with us. Uh, that's amazing. Now that you started about uh, talking about travel, I have a question about traveling. Uh. So both of you actually are uh, pretty well traveled. Dave, you have lived in UK and France before coming here. Yeah. Um, what was your journey like traveling all those countries? Um, I think I started off going to the UK to do my study. And uh, uh, when I finished the study, I was uh, having a moment um, wondering where to go as the next step. And then the amazing job opportunity came to uh, work as the, um, uh, a graduate program um, to, uh, in France. So I think, yeah, I've been through all the cities and in the UK and uh, Europe is still unknown and a lot of uh, new things to, deliver, uh, to discover. Why not just um, take the new opportunity to see? So I end up um, uh, working in France for a year um, before taking another steps um, to uh, to the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, throughout the time in uh, in Europe, um, I never stopped traveling. Um, so it's a lot of things to see. That's amazing. Um, you mentioned you studied in both countries, in UK and France. What did you study? Uh, I um, I study in the UK as a uh, as a material science um, degree, and I did a uh, bachelor and uh, masters uh, in London, and it's quite a dynamic city to live in and to study, and uh, yeah, I like it quite a lot. Great, thank you. <laughs> um, Saad, uh, where did you live before coming to, uh, to the Netherlands? Yeah, sure. Let me. I guess rewind the clock a bit. So I was born in Bangladesh. Uh, when I was three, we moved to the, the U.S. So I uh, lived in Los Angeles and then North Dallas. And then after that, um, went to Malaysia, so Kuala Lumpur. And I did my bachelor's and master's there and started working. And um, because of that, I um, then was able to relocate to the Netherlands uh, for my profession. So, yeah, quite a lot of different uh, places, let's say. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. Um, how did you end up in Leiden, Dave? Did you hear about Leiden before? <sighs> did you know there is a city like this in the Netherlands? Well, I hardly know Leiden before I moved in. Um, the, the previous company is located in Sassenheim, so I took the, uh, the next the city nearby. So Leiden was the first choice and I'm not regretting it because um, I used to live in big cities, uh, in Shanghai, in London, and Leiden is the, uh, is the perfect combination uh, between a big city and, uh, and, and uh, lots of a rural area and uh, close to nature. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, what about you, Saad? How did you end up in Leiden? Yeah, so the company that I was working for, uh, our data center was right outside of Leiden, so 
Um, it was kind of logical, and I used to cycle to work uh, every day, which was really enjoyable. And uh, yeah, been here ever since. So uh, quite quite happy to be here. That's amazing, um, Dave. When you lived in the um, in France, um, what was the society like, and how does it compare to the Dutch society? <laughs> Yeah, I happen to live in the rural area of France, so um, I think the bus only runs one hour per per journey, yeah, per bus. <laughs> and uh, I remember back at the time I want to get a microwave, and uh, I have to drag my suitcase and walk for half an hour before I reach the next Carrefour. And uh, the, the the journey back is another half an hour, so it was really warm, really big, and really empty, and not very well connected uh, in the in the rural areas of France. And it happened to be that time I don't have a car, so it makes things much more difficult to live there. That's great. <sighs> um, what about you, Saad? How has your integration been like to the Dutch society? Um, yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was quite interesting because. Comparing to where I used to live in Kuala Lumpur, uh, quite different in terms of mentality and just the way things work in general. Um, so Leiden was, let's say, uh, quite small compared to where I've historically lived before. So that was an adjustment for me. Um, was not used to, let's say, things closing around six o'clock and uh, you know other uh, other you know nighttime activities that just didn't uh, happen anymore i guess like just going out and um things of that nature so it was it was an adjustment but uh yeah i mean leiden itself is um quite an interesting place to be um once you discover it right yeah definitely um dave as far as i have heard you have been in the singleton's market <sighs> so far how has the uh dating scene been like for you? Because uh, in the previous show, we have heard from um, our guest speaker that she found love uh, while she was at the uh, choir. Um, how that experience been like for you? And what are your resources for finding girls so far? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think I'm a, I'm a failure at finding girls. So maybe I'm not the best one to answer this question. But uh, um, I think there are plenty of girls around in Leiden. It's not difficult to find, and um, maybe I am the one that um, that is keep to myself too much. <laughs> so yeah, I I I meet people in the choir group, and uh, and uh, I have colleagues around the work, and maybe I didn't go out too much to the pubs and to the clubs yet. <laughs> and maybe that's the way to find girls. But yeah, I'm happy to hear uh, Saad's story about it. <laughs> we will <laughs> get to Saad first, but yeah. I want to also hear about your French story. Was it easier in France than um, in the Netherlands? I think it was easier to have a conversation uh, in, uh, in France. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's just people there have a tendency that to be friendly and then keep, uh, they keep the conversation super long. And uh, you can have the, the opportunity to to think what they talk about, and then uh, you 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 drag out more conversation afterwards. Mm -hmm. But in Netherlands, people are very short and uh, and precise. So when you ask a question, "Is a nice weather today?" then the answer you get is probably, "Yeah, it's nice." And that's the end of the sentence. <laughs> so, and you don't have the opportunity to dig out further information from the conversation and ask questions. So, um, yeah, for me, uh, maybe it's yeah difficult to uh, to talk to get the conversation uh, further. I guess. Uh, what about you, Saad? How has it been for you in the dating scene? Um, I mean, in general, quite active, uh, even though it's Corona and a pandemic. But I think that's driven most people online even mm. more. Um, so, yeah, kind of um, kind of busy times in, in some senses. Uh, but I mean, I'm happy to answer any any further. Um. Uh, well, maybe you can uh, share some of your uh, tips with uh, Dave later on. <laughs> Now that you have been a lot more active. Cats, pictures with <laughs> dogs, cat. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> or fish. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if women are really into fish. <laughs> mm. Yeah, who knows. Um, Saad, um, you grew up as a Muslim. Um, 
um, by by culture, by religion. Mm. Are you still practicing it, especially now that it's um, Ramadan? Um, were you able to fast? Um, so I've done it before. I didn't do it this Ramadan, actually. Mm. Um, so have not, uh, yeah, not actively practicing, let's say. Um, were you able to join any Muslim communities in the Netherlands um, or in Leiden in general? Yeah, well, in Leiden, I, I, I've been to, let's say, one of the mosques up in Groenord mm -hmm. um, quite a number of times. Um, I think the the difficulty was the language barrier for me, mm. uh, because when I would go, it would either be uh, in Dutch or it would be in Arabic. Mm. So it's like, okay, I don't understand either one of those. Um, but I think in general, the community is quite nice. Uh, it's just that, yeah, I maybe did not have the fortunate uh, luck to integrate properly in a way. So it was a bit difficult in that sense. I understand. Um, what about you, Dave? Are you part of any social um, communities, any groups in Leiden? Uh, I, I'm not connected to any um, social groups at the moment. Um, yeah, uh, myself is non-religious. Mm -hmm. um, I participated um, in one or two Christian uh, events mm -hmm. uh, with my friend, and I think uh, yeah, it was nice. People are very friendly, and they are happy to accept new people to join. That's amazing. Uh, both of your families live in China and Bangladesh, right? Um, have they been able to visit Leiden to visit you? Where do you live? What do you do? Um, yeah, so a couple of years ago, like, of course, pre, pre pandemic, uh, my parents both came to visit. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was quite a great experience for them. They had never been to the Netherlands before. Uh, let alone Leiden, so there was, it was quite new, and uh, yeah, it was, um, let's say, a bit of a culture shock as well, uh, having to see, like, okay, we need to go by bike everywhere, or uh, is that it's just not yeah. something that was um, feasible, or something that's possible in, let's say, Bangladesh, for example. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, quite a positive experience in general. That's amazing. What about you, Dave? Uh, have, have your family been able to visit you? Um, in the Netherlands? Uh, yeah, they came uh, a couple of times mm. in the past. And uh, yeah, they are curious to find out what Netherlands are like at the very beginning. <laughs> and they visited uh, the, the Sandam and uh, the Gieshorn. Uh, I managed to show them around. But I think after uh, a week or two weeks, the excitement kind of calms down a lot and then they, they, they miss home. Yeah, I understand. Um, were you able to visit your families during the pandemics? Because most of the country has been in lockdown. I'm curious what your what your experience has been like. Uh, no, actually, so I have not uh, seen my family in like almost two years now. Mm. So yeah, it just it's just not feasible due to the uh, restrictions over there, as well as um, you know from the Netherlands as well. Mm. well it, yeah. The same. I remember back in the beginning of the pandemic in March, I, was, I had a long conversation with my parents whether to come back to China or not. Then uh, we realized, um, th yeah, it's, uh, the, it's too long, the quarantine period, and uh, we are running the risk of infecting uh, the people in China, also uh, and inf uh, infecting my colleagues in here. So mm -hmm. uh, at the end, the decision was it's better to stay and uh, not to spread it further. So uh, yeah, I didn't talk, I didn't fly back at the end, and um, I think uh, I, after I missed the initial window in March, then uh, there was almost no flights um, afterwards. I understand. Hard for all of us. Uh, yeah. Um, Dave, you joined um, music associations both in Leiden and Delft. Yeah. You mentioned. Which city do you think is more um, friendly to international community so far? <laughs> Um, I haven't experienced the full, um, just from the music uh, society uh, point of view, I think the one in Delft are more open. Um, it, just my feeling, just because um, the, the music session was conducted in English and uh, um, there are more people studying PhDs and, and working uh, in that society. And at the end of the day, I can um, yeah, communicate more freely mm. with the people around me. I hear you. Um, so you mentioned that um, uh, while you were living in Malaysia and US, mm. you have encountered a lot of discrimination and racism. Mm. Um, how does it translate to the Netherlands? Have you 
experienced anything like that while you lived in the Netherlands? Um, I would say not directly. So probably from unconscious bias or something like that, maybe in the workplace, um, certain, let's say, behaviors, things of that nature. So nothing, nothing direct like what I've experienced before mm -hmm. in the past. Um, so it definitely exists, you know, everywhere. But uh, I've not, let's say, been overtly offended by anyone, let's say. Are there any incidents that uh, you could share with us? Uh, within the yeah. Netherlands? Um, so far from what you have experienced. Oh, um, well, so let's say the previous uh, organization that I was working for mm -hmm. um, was not, let's say, used to having um, a sudden influx of expats, for example. So our team was all new from different places, and so the let's say the local population that had been there for decades, they were uh, not friendly in, in, in that sense. So you would, uh, you would feel judgment um, in, in many different shapes and forms, but it, w it wouldn't be obvious, let's say. Sorry, you have experienced that. It happens. <laughs> what about you, Dave? Um, have you ever experienced um, like a discrimination, even if it's a positive discrimination? Um, or racism in the Netherlands? Um, uh, yeah, I, I would say um, I hardly notice any for me. Mm -hmm. um, so far, the, um, uh, people are all very friendly, and uh, the, the, I think I'm glad to work in a company that has a quite a, a large gen um, culture mix. So in the office, there may be only um, 10% of people are native Dutch auditors are around the world, from Germany, France, um, uh, Ukraine, or uh, Belarus. So uh, everyone speaking English, and we all share our stories from our own culture. So it was quite uh, uh, friendly nature. And I think uh, these kind of multinational companies are not uh, the only thing in the Netherlands. Um, there are uh, many companies with a large population expat. Uh, that's accepting uh, people from all different backgrounds. Dave, you are um, such a keen photographer and we have seen amazing photos that you make. Um, some of us are uh, displayed in here. Um, you are keen on taking a lot of amazing food photos that are just like coming out of a master chef's kitchen. <sighs> um, so what makes you um, to take these photos? Is it your passion for food or is it your passion of reflecting yourself? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think I keep the habit of taking a special picture every week and post it online. And uh, beforehand, I, I, every week I went some place and take photo of the scenery. And it was possible, but after pandemic, it was kind of difficult to go around. So I figured out why not just uh, trying to do some more cookings where I also uh, very passionate about eating nice things. So at the end, uh, I try to make one dish every week and then post it online. So at the end, I end up with uh, quite a collection now in the past 12 months. Beautiful. Speaking about food, um, what is your favorite Dutch food? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, hotspots and then kiblings are very nice, uh, to my opinion. That's amazing. <laughs> what about you, Saad? Yeah, um, I I actually uh, agree with Dave as well. Hotspot was quite nice. Um, I have to say, herring is an acquired taste. Maybe not for me, <laughs> but uh, but in general, yeah, I, I would say Hotspot is up there. And so my final question to both of you, basically, what makes Leiden so special for international community? Um, well, for me, it's it's let's say. Uh, really the networks that I've been able to form here. Mm -hmm. um, so there are quite a lot of uh, international events like Leiden meetups and things of that nature where I've met really interesting people from all over the place. Um, but yeah, it was mostly, you know, the connections that I've made with colleagues who are now my friends and family mm -hmm. that uh, keep me grounded in Leiden, actually. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing. You, Dave? Yeah, but I think uh, to me it's... Uh, I think it's to do with nature of Leiden and uh, looking at population density, Leiden is actually one of the most dense city uh, in the Netherlands. So at the end, uh, the, the result is we have all sorts of shops. Uh, we can find everything uh, from clothes shops to uh, uh, tech shops, everything in Leiden on the street. 
as well as lots of pubs and lots of uh, restaurants. And so we, I don't really need to go to another city to do, uh, the, to do uh, weekend shopping. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other hand, with such a big population, uh, we have lots of high-tech um, companies um, built around Leiden. And uh, with that, um, yeah, it's, it's kind, of, kind of easy to find um, those tech companies hiring expats um, coming into Leiden and work here. And um, yeah, I think it's just, uh, I, you know, uh, I think it's an effect at the end of the day um, th that we build up a, a quite large expat community that can gather and can speak. So um, it, it was nice. And that's the end of another episode of Hello Leiden. We hope to see you next week. Please do not forget to watch us, like us, and share us. Um, you cannot miss us. We are almost on all social media accounts. Check Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are everywhere. And if you're a foreigner, newcomer, tourist, expat, living in Leiden, and you have a story to share, just like our friends did today, uh, please email us at helloleiden at slotostad.nl. Um, it was me, Zam Abasanova, for Hello Leiden, Slotostad TV. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Leiden. Hello Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi, Pudai Leiden.